Massachusetts is used to paving the way for the nation on major issues, same-sex marriage, near universal health care, and this year was no different as the state helped lead the charge in going after those responsible for the opioid crisis. We ushered in a new district attorney with a new view on justice, and Boston became the center of a massive investigation into the warped admission processes at some of the nation's most prestigious institutes of higher education. Back in March, U.S. Attorney Andrew Lelling announced Operation Varsity Blues, which has resulted in more than 50 people being charged in a massive college admissions conspiracy involving some of the country's most prestigious schools and more than $25 million in bribes. These parents are a catalog of wealth and privilege. They include, for example, CEOs of private and public companies, successful securities and real estate investors, two well-known actresses, a famous fashion designer, and the co-chairman of a global law firm. Academy Award-winning actress Felicity Huffman was among the parents charged and spent 11 days in prison after she admitted to paying $15,000 to an SAT official to correct her daughter's incorrect answers, raising her score by 400 points. Actress Lori Laughlin and her husband are still fighting the charges against them, accused of paying $500,000 in bribes to have their two daughters recruited to, the, recruited to the USC crew team when neither actually rode. While these are among the highest profile parents involved, they are certainly not alone. Joining me to talk about this and much more, Tina Opie, Associate Professor at Babson College. Good to see you, Tina. See you. Uh, Shannon O'Brien, former state treasurer, former Democratic candidate for governor. Hello to you, Shannon. Jennifer Viserys is the director of Independent Women's Law Center, contributing columnist for the Boston Globe. Good to see you. you too. And as an added incentive, if you <laughs> do not say the words Donald Trump for the next 30 minutes, you get to keep your GBH mug. Pretty oh, impressive. Like, okay. Easy for me. Uh, fine. Let me start with you since you work in a university <laughs> setting. Yes. Is this an aberration? Is what was done in this Varsity Blues thing really only affecting the defendants, the people who were targeted by Andrew Lelling? Or is this going to have a trickle up effect onto the power of wealth and college admissions in general? Well, I, ho I do think that it's a widespread issue. I think that, for example, buying your way into college, as well as some of the fraudulent behavior that we see in Varsity Blues, is widespread. And I think Lelling actually alluded to that in some of his interviews. But is that going to change? I hope so. I hope that people will consider or ponder before they decide to buy their way into How about legally buying their way in? I mean, for example, Jared Kushner, even. even his mm -hmm. guidance counselor yeah. in high school, said you're not going to get into Harvard. And lo and behold, his dad gave a couple of million dollars and he got in. Is that going to stop? That's, I discussed that with Andrew Lowling. He said the difference is that's legal. Exactly. Yeah. No, that's legal. But to, to your question Problem about whether not. or not this is just the tip of the iceberg, the illegal conduct, I believe that it is. Yeah. I believe that for, you know, they they got one consultant and the people who were caught up in his web. I'm sure that there are 50, 60, 70 people like him who are selling services like that around the is country. It, before I get to you, is it, well, I'll get to you. Is a week and a half in jail for a high-profile person enough to deter someone else from committing a similar crime? I, I think that you're going to see a great amount of deterrence. But what I'd prefer, rather than sending these people to jail, is I'd rather see them making large donations to places like You Aspire, which is one of those places mm -hmm. here in Boston, which helps people from you know less wealthy backgrounds learn about how they can go to college, how they can afford to go to college, because the real issue here is the class divide. And so obviously there's criminal behavior here, but the bigger issue is how can colleges, 25% of whom are deficit spending right now, who are incented to, to make these kinds of arrangements, how do you tackle that bigger problem where you're trying to both, both do diversity as well as excellence? I'm almost embarrassed to go from that to politics, but very quickly, <laughs> Andrew Lelling has taken on issues like immigration, mm -hmm. uh, guns, crimes, some controversial cases, a judge in a particular yeah. case. Whether you agree or not, is this a platform for this guy? I never heard of the guy until three years ago. Right. He was in the U.S. Attorney's Office. Is this guy going to rise in the political ranks here? There's going to be an opening at some point in the right. governor's office. Yes? No? Andy's a friend, and I think he is a career prosecutor. He's not really a political guy, but although he has conservative instincts. No, I don't think he's a politician. I think he's a lawyer, and I think he's a prosecutor. My guess is you don't know him, but do you think that he this is a platform? I do think it's a. I think it's interesting. The platform Varsity Blues, in particular, has given him an audience that he didn't have before, and I think it's really interesting when we say many people who are in politics now initially said they weren't politicians. So I just think we should keep our eye on it. Two words, Rudy Giuliani. We got to keep moving. <laughs>